So we got one set of endros off and dad's cutting through. So I'm going to follow him with the wagon here in just a second. Um, looks like it's doing a pretty good job. I mean, there's probably three square feet here and we've got a few kernels, but that's definitely a butt kernel that's head shelling. That one, hard to tell a little bit, but probably not anything too crazy. The spot that I checked a minute ago was pretty much spotless. There are a few on the ground, I guess, but some of that might be... There's some bolt holes in the middle of a head that if it's shelling on the auger, there could be kernels falling out. But if we look in the adjacent rows here, anything that's going out through the chopper um, or that isn't getting shelled off the cob, um, a lot of times will end up getting blown or knocked into the standing corn next to where the combine ran. So since everything that I'm finding is underneath where the head went, other than a few ears that got knocked over getting cut in here, it looks like. Um, it seems to be shelling pretty nicely. Chicken feed. We're getting ready to pull a wagon load through the rock bottom crossing here, which seems to have a little bit of a hole right in this area. Hopefully nothing breaks. Uh, a number of years ago, before I was helping, I had one of these Demco wagons, broke a spindle right going through here. So we're kind of loaded a little bit on the light side and we're going to top it off with a grain cart once we get across here. Because we don't need to break anything. Break enough stuff without trying. Yeah, I think I'm actually gonna park this on the other side. Because that will be easier to load with the cart. flat enough that it will stay put? I think so. So now I get to hike across the rock bottom crossing. Fortunately my boots are waterproof. and roll.
Okay. It's not quite in the right spot, but I need to blow things off a little bit, so we'll catch that in a few minutes. Uh, so since we just did a little bit of corn today, I didn't blow off the combine before we started. Um, so I'm going to do that, give it a quick uh, go over with the uh, air gun and knock some dirt out of a few pulleys and things. And need to adjust a couple things to switch back to soybean configuration. And hopefully we'll be running beans within half an hour, 45 minutes. I think we're ready to roll on soybeans. Uh, it's pushing three o'clock, so I probably underestimated how long it was going to take to switch stuff over. Uh, and partly that I needed to replace or switch out those tracks with the new plastic ones. Um, but everything's together and it looks decent so far on the orbit reel contraption stuff. Uh, I just have to see how it holds up for the rest of the season. Uh, I have the pieces drawn up to be made out of steel, uh, somewhere cheaper than buying them from the manufacturer, but I haven't had a chance to do too much with that yet. Uh, I need to double check a couple measurements still to make sure that I got everything right. Otherwise, hoping that we can get some soybeans run. Um, I am gonna change some stuff on the yield monitor. The instructions say to recalibrate the vibration every year uh, at the beginning of the season and I feel like that maybe throws off the what the vibration would be otherwise. Um, we haven't changed anything on this for several years but it seems like we're reading bushels way less than what they should be. So I think I'm manually going to change that uh, setting or that um, number in the calibration factors back to what it was before the start of this season and see if that works better or not. Um, it should save everything raw so that basically once you change the calibration stuff, whether that's by doing weights or plugging in numbers manually, uh, that it updates everything in the monitor. Uh, at least that's my understanding of how it works and that's my hope of how it works. Um, in any case, a little bit less critical on soybeans because in almost all cases the soybeans are all either going into a bin uh, straight out of the field in the percentages that they will get sold in or they go to the elevator as the percentages that they get sold in um, for the share crop landlords and stuff. So uh, anyway, we're gonna try some uh, setting changes and see if we can run some beads this afternoon. Okay, we just ran a few. Time to get out and see how we're doing. Um, it seems like this particular spot, there's quite a bit of green stems or they were showing pretty high moisture, 14-15 uh, range. Um, looks like we're still knocking some out with the reel or sickle shatter. Not a crazy amount though, like we can probably live with that I guess. Maybe a bushel. Trouble is especially on this outside pass, there's enough green stuff over here that I gotta run the reel pretty low um, in order to get everything raked in. So it looks like I'm missing a few of those lima beans, but the stuff that's dry is all going into the grain tank, as far as I see here at least. So this is just some stems that sort of, if you shut down the separator, uh, basically with it full, throttle down the engine and then disengage so that you sort of bring everything to a stop fairly quickly, usually it'll puke out kind of a wad of stems that haven't gone through the, uh, chopper. I thought there was one there that had some beans in it, but it's good. Um, see, there's a pretty green one that's broken open, so we got the beans out of that. I think I might close down just a little bit more, and I think I might adjust my sieve. Eh, we're maybe losing a little bit back here, so I maybe need to open the top, close the bottom, and try to get a little bit more stuff back into the return. Um, to make sure we're not blowing anything out the back. See how it looks on the shaker pan here. Usually you can hear the soybeans hit the tray if there's any in there, which I'm not hearing any, that's good. There was one somewhere. I heard, or I heard it and I saw it bounce and then I lost it. Right there. So we are running a little bit over the top. So what I'm going to do, there's basically two sets of louvers on top of each other. So I'm going to open up these top ones so that a little bit bigger stuff is able to fall through or a little bit more stuff falls through. And then close the bottom, which separates 
Uh, basically, anything that goes over the top of this top one goes out the back, and then the second one gives you sort of a secondary sift, essentially. So anything that goes through that goes into the grain tank, anything that goes off of it comes out this auger and up the elevator back into the cylinder to be re-threshed and then go through the separation again. Um, so ideally you want all the green pods to be going back up there so that they can go through again and get the beans knocked out of them. Um, but I think we're not doing too bad. I'm going to close down the cylinder a little bit, adjust a little bit on some of the seven chaffer stuff and keep rolling. <laughs> pheasants around here but a lot of the pasture ground has become crop in the last say 15 years uh, and we had several probably at least three pretty cold winters in a row or cold winters wet springs that I think were pretty hard on the brood uh, but there are getting to be a few more around here the last year or two it seems like um, that we've been we'll see a few more during harvest than we did there for a few years it's about 6.30 and we're cutting along. Uh, I've probably got 12 or so acres left, I would guess. Um, so I'm hoping that I can get this field finished tonight. Uh, there's not much clouds though, so we may get some dew here early. Um, we'll just have to see how it goes, but it's stuff's pretty dry, I think. Um, it's been sunny all day and most of the day yesterday also. Um, so I think that there's not a lot of moisture at the top of the surface of the ground. Um, so we'll just have to see how things go, I guess. Um, going pretty smoothly overall. Um, I've got a section that I probably should replace on the left end of the cutter bar, but I think as long as we're in like decent cutting beans, it probably isn't bad enough to cause too much problems, but uh, I'm probably going to do that one in the morning when I'm going through stuff before we open up any new fields and usually when we open stuff up we'll run the, the sickle drive in in the green stuff or on the edge of the field where there's a bunch of grass and stuff usually and cuts hard just so you're not putting that stress clear through the entire cutter bar. Um, so I'm going to want those sections to be pretty sharp and tip top. Um, 
but other than that, things seem to be going relatively smoothly. Uh, I'm pretty sure the yield monitor in the combine is still under counting, possibly by a significant amount. Um, we'll just have to see how many bushels there are on the truck that we just got loaded up or the dad's loading now um, to get an idea. Uh, I, did, I changed the, the numbers in the calibration table back to what they were from last year, um, which would just be the vibration calibration would be the main change. Um, but it seems like it's off quite a bit. Um, I've never, I've not had as good of luck with the soybeans on this monitor as the corn. The corn usually is pretty dead on or you can calibrate it so that it's pretty dead on. And it seems like the soybean side, even when you do the calibration, it's still not that accurate. I mean like 5% or maybe a little bit more accurate than that, but definitely not 1% like the corn typically is. Um, but. We might get a nice sunset, although there's no clouds to, you know, light up as the sun goes over the horizon, so, I don't know. If there is, though, I'll try to get some video. Conditions seem to be deteriorating quickly. I'm gonna get out and check, but I kind of suspect that probably the stems are getting tough. I don't know that the pods are gonna be very tough yet. Very crispy. Crispy. That's pretty crispy. Maybe it's just the stuff. Uh, I think the I think the dew's coming up from the ground. Um, cause I'm definitely starting to have trouble with stuff pushing and I think it's, yep, I think it's just the new, um, which is unfortunate because the stems are very crispy still. Um, well, I think I'm going to try to keep going since I think I can thresh if I can cut. Well, made it till 8.30, but the stems are getting tough. Um, I'm still getting, I was, was still getting everything cut, but I can... Well, not everything, everything. I was leaving a little bit here and there, and I think it's going to get worse real fast. Um, so we're going to put what we've got in the green tank onto the green cart and throw the tarp over top of it and see what tomorrow brings. Hopefully, uh, the sun will shine and the dew will burn off at a reasonable hour because I think we're going to move to the field that's a few miles away since it looks like we have a pretty decent weather window here the next few days and try to get that taken off before I have to take off on Friday. Stay tuned! <laughs> 